Hello, DeKalb County School District. My name is Lisa Lake and I am the host for this segment of The Family Room. This family room is an opportunity for us to sit down, talk with our parents, and really engage on meaningful and relevant topics that are topics that are exciting and, and relevant to our families. So today we have our exceptional education staff here as well as myself. I am a parent. I am also the exceptional education parent mentor. And I am excited to just get started, so let's chat. <laughs> All right, as a parent mentor, I absolutely know firsthand what it is like to have a child with a disability as well as have a child that really needed specialized services, supports, um, and just a host of different resources as well. And just parenting a child with a disability can be hard. It really can. And I would love for us to talk a little bit about just what our experiences have been like in DeKalb County School District and, um, and just let's learn a little bit more about our families. So Kim, tell us about your beautiful family and kind of what your experience has been like in DeKalb County School District. Yeah, so um, I have a six-year-old. He actually just turned six in September. Um, he's autistic. He recently was also diagnosed with ADHD. Um, he's non-speaking, so he also has the mixed receptive expressive language disorder. Last year, we actually got him evaluated for the pre-K, but we didn't do it until I want to say like maybe December, January. So he was able to get into the pre-K for like the last two months. Um, and I did that because I knew that there wasn't going to be a way that he could go into general education right. as a kindergartner. Um, I have really truly felt like me doing that would be setting him up for failure. So I made sure to try to get him the IEP and you know everything that he needed ahead of time. Um, and so, so far, you know, everything has been pretty good. You know, the initial, sometimes there's the lack of communication, but overall, as far as getting him what he needs, um, so far has been, has been pretty good, pretty good experience. Awesome. That's great to hear. Natifia, has this been your experience or kind of what has, um, tell us a little bit about your family. Yeah, for the most part, um, my kid's also in kindergarten. <laughs> um, he's five and we've, been with DeKalb County since preschool. We did transition from another county um, at the beginning of preschool, but the transition from going to the other county to DeKalb County was a pretty good transition. Um, there was no issues. I got in contact with everyone I needed to get in contact with. Um, we did all our testings. We went over the I IEP. Um, we made adjustments, um, and he was able to transition right into his new class. And um, yeah, the, the teachers were great, the pairs are great. Um, he does have some disabilities where he needs extra medical attention. So okay. um, I talk to the nurses all the time. Um, <laughs> they go visit him. Um, they even go to the different schools. So we have our different nurses. Um, and it's been a really good experience for us. We get all our services um, for the most part. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's been great for us in DeKalb. Awesome. So this is what we want to hear, right? So. Let's say you're a brand new parent. Um, you just got a child that you've had diagnosed um, with a disability and you are trying to now start this process of getting your child into school services and you are just um, you haven't had any other supports up until this point. What are some things that you could tell a brand new parent, um, what kind of advice would you give? Um, I would definitely ask all the questions. Um, yeah. I would definitely <laughs> make a list of questions um, and what your child needs specifically um, and what you may need from the school, from the teachers, from mm -hmm. any therapist. Um, and then I would also, I would take um, the advice that they give, especially like, I know as parents, we kind of, feel like we know what our child needs. We do, but a lot of the times it's some stuff we don't know. So um, I feel like for me, meeting with all of the, everyone who's going to be involved um, during the school year um, to especially talk about what it is that your kids need outside of the class, not only outside the classroom, but just specifically in the classroom, what you need from each person and what that kid needs and getting feedback um, and 
and asking if there's any other services that could be given at the school as well. Um, so yeah, I just feel like asking a lot of questions and then building a relationship with who's going to be in your kid's life throughout the school year. That is great. Kim, what do you think? Is that similar advice you have? Um, one thing that I would, depending on, of course, when your child is diagnosed, right. if they get an early enough diagnosis, one thing that I didn't do that I wish I would have was to have more contact, more access with like the parent to parent um, organization. I'm now seeing now like, oh man, there's a lot of things that they told me then, but because it was so much information being like bombarded, you're being bombarded with all this information that I didn't take advantage of that. And the other thing was putting him into, or maybe not putting him into, because I kind of had, I was kind of skeptical, so I didn't want to necessarily put him into the pre-K, but at the very least having him evaluated at that time. So I have that option that instead of waiting until when I waited and then I'm like, okay, hey, we got to get this done before we get to this point. So just kind of making sure to, let me know if they're diagnosed at three, four, just going ahead and doing that evaluation with um, the the diagnostic, um, I think Corwood diagnostics and, you know, getting that IEP and just getting that already in place. Um, and like I said, I wish I would have done that earlier because I do now see that with him in school, um, he is improving um, drastically. Like he's improving <laughs> quite a bit. Um, so I was definitely very hesitant. Yeah. Like last year, April 10th, it was his first day. I cried, <laughs> boo-hooed, but like we all now, cried. yeah, we like all I, cried. we have all cried. It was so bad though. <laughs> it was so bad that dad had to like pull me down the hallway. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> but um, I would definitely at the very least have that option available, Yeah, you know, so. Yeah, I think um, just getting those initial services, it's, it's overwhelming sometimes because you really don't know what you don't know, right? So you're going off of information people are giving you, you're trying to take it all in, and you're still trying to actually parent a child that has some very specific needs. And for many of us, we didn't get a handbook on how to, how to parent a child that's different, you know? And so, um, I definitely love the suggestions that you gave as well as some of the advice that you gave. Um, maybe we could hear from our table over here and see if there is some other advice that can be shared uh, for parents who are new and they are just coming in um, into getting school services. So let's hear a little bit from um, either Kiana or Michelle. Sure. Want to um, this one? <laughs> I really love what Tiff said as it relates to making the list of things that the child might need. I always say that we are here to support your baby, whatever that looks like. And so one of the things that I think is so extremely important, and, and Kim, you spoke to this as well, is really around getting to know the individuals that are going to be supporting your child at the school and making sure that they're connected mm -hmm. and understand what it is um, that is unique about your child so that they can really lean in and support the process. That was fantastic advice. Um, and I think the, some of the things that we could also think about is how parents are getting information, um, communication. I know that's a very critical point. Um, and then just being able to have access to resources. So let's definitely talk um, a little bit about resources. As the parent mentor, my position is a unique position in the county because I'm not a teacher. <laughs> So I'm not in a school. Um, I'm not in a, an administrative position, which is what most people expect in the school district. There's going to be teachers, there's going to be administrators, and then there's just going to be other support staff. And in my case, I'm a parent, and that was one of the main criteria was uh, for my position is to have a child with a disability and be a parent. And so um, I get this opportunity to mentor our families that are going through this same process that I have also had to go through, and I've had to go through this process three times um, at, for my three children. 
um, that are that have been through exceptional education. And um, one of the things I can say hands down is having access to resources, having access to information was one of the critical things for me. So let's talk a little bit about resources. What are some of the resources that you have found, um, Natifia, that have been really beneficial for you um, as you're going through this process? Um, so before uh, we started school, um, preschool or pre-K, we were in the Babies Can't Wait program. Um, that allowed us to receive services before school. Um, and then when he turned three, we were able to go ahead and do all our testing and uh, our IEP meetings and go meet with the school and go meet with everybody that was gonna be in his life. That was a really good um, transition for us. It was really easy because I knew what I was walking into. I wasn't just blindsided or just walking to a school and registering them for school. Right. So that was really helpful. Um, the parent to parent, um, as Kim mentioned, that was really helpful for me. Um, I'm a millennial, so I'm on the internet. <laughs> um, and I do a lot of social media. So yeah. social media, um, I, I follow a lot of private um, special needs groups. Exactly. Um, like I said, okay. my kid is medically complex. So we have feeding tubes. Um, he's not really verbal. He doesn't really walk. He has a walker, he has a wheelchair. Um, so I get to talk to a lot of parents in those groups that have similar experiences that I may not be able to go talk to the parents at school because we just take our kids to school. We don't really get to sit <laughs> and talk to right. each other. So um, that really helped me being able to talk to, to an actual person who experienced the same things as I did. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Kim, what about you? Um, so my experience, of course, was a little bit different. My son, he um, turned three right before he got his diagnosis. So we didn't have the babies can't wait. Of course, I had all these people saying, oh, babies can't wait. I'm like, I can't. He's three. <laughs> Missed the cutoff. <laughs> Missed the cutoff. <laughs> um, so, you know, the it, it was actually quite difficult. Um, this was also in the time of the COVID and, you know, the pandemic. And so trying to get him services and literally like ha not having a clue as to where to start. So everything was like, like she said, it's just on the Internet yeah. all the time. I'm still like that now. I'm all day when he's in school. I'm all day researching stuff, taking webinars, trainings, just all the time. Like, like that's my life. And so, you know, initially, you know, the psychologist that diagnosed him, she has, you know, recommendations and a couple of places and stuff, but a lot of the places either they had waiting lists or they were so far away that trying to get to them um, was just very difficult. Um, but we eventually, the private speech therapist that we found has been amazing. Um, so he was diagnosed in October um, of 2020. And so we finally got speech in that January. Now, mind you, he was supposed to have speech that previous year just because they knew he had a speech delay, but they had to cancel all the appointments. So <laughs> at Choa, so, um, so the speech therapist and then his occupational therapist, they just have so much information. They were a great resource. Um, and if they don't know, they were going to find out, you know, they were going to find that information. Um, and so like now they're actually, he has to kind of graduate from them because they only have like a certain age and like I'm dreading it so, so much. Um, but we've located another speech therapist um, who actually works with the AAC device directly, which is what he has. Um, so he'll be able to get that. But they were just they were really good. Um, and then also, like she said, I went on Facebook and just joined everything, every, every group, special <laughs> needs, exceptional needs, yes. autism, Georgia, like IEP, like uh, just, just, yeah. you know, and then so when you're going on there and then if you have a question about something, you can like search the group because yeah. it's probably already been asked right. and then you can find the answer. It's like, oh, somebody else has this. So, you know, it's just that has definitely been a huge help. Um, I do wish that there were more groups right. or resources where the parents can have that other person because having someone who is going through exactly what you're going through or something similar and being able to talk to that person, you know, when you have family and friends and they don't have a 
a, you know, a kid with, right. with additional needs, it, it's hard. And so having someone else to talk to yep. that understands what you're going through. Um, absolutely, I completely agree. I would love for Rolanda to tell us a little bit about um, what are some other resources for families um, in the department, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up with allowing Ms. Um, Michelle to tell us a little bit as well about what else this department can provide. So you all mentioned um, about Babies Can't Wait, and that is, of course, where student, children start who are not enrolled in school. And so we also have preschool diagnostics, diagnostics. And so those students typically start from three to five years old, where we evaluate those students. And so they either can typically transition through Babies Can't Wait or parents can just simply call. Um, Miss Lisa is an excellent resource for parents who don't know where to start. Reaching out to the parent mem mentor to ask for support, to ask for help, where do I start? We also provide um, services and resources for those parents for students who are not found eligible. We provide um, packets and things of that nature because oftentimes students, they may have developed um, at that particular age range and so um, there may not be a significant area of deficit at that time. So then we ask them to work on different skills or whatnot as they develop. And if once they can come back to be reevaluated, then if there's a deficit area, things of that nature, then the student may be found eligible for service. Awesome. Thank you, Rolanda. Mm -hmm. Last couple of words here we're going to have from Michelle, and she's going to tell us also just a little bit about what exceptional education can do for our parents and our families in this district. And thank you so much for being so open and coming and having this conversation with us. We have, and thank you, uh, Rolanda, you were talking about some of the resources on the front end. We will serve your baby until the day before their 22nd birthday. We will um, help you with resources and supports to help transition um, your young person into, you know, post-secondary you know, life after high school. We have several um, community-based vocational training programs. We have community-based instruction. We will um, help prepare your little one um, who will soon be an older person to just be ready. Uh, and it's individualized. It's individualized. You may be saying now, well, what do I do? I'm just not sure. That's just so far ahead for me right now. But we will help you and uh, navigate from transition from elementary to middle, from middle to high, and then high to post-secondary. We are here for you. We have several layers of support at the school level, lead teachers for special education. You all talked about the various therapists. We've got everything for you. And we have this wonderful parent mentor. We are working on getting another parent mentor. We are here for you. And I just wanted to say thank you again for um, having this conversation with us today. All right, and listen, there we have it, you guys. We have had a fantastic conversation in the family room today uh, with our exceptional education staff, as well as our parents who have been so gracious to come and join us and step into the family room with us today. And I, again, as was your host today for this segment, Lisa Lake, I am the DeKalb County School District Parent Mentor. And I hope to see you guys back into the family room again.